The Apollo moon missions were an incredible feat of engineering, science, humanity. They were driven partly by competition. Uh, it was around about the Cold War era. There was motivation politically to better one another. You had America and Russia rising as these big superpowers. And Kennedy said, we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely to Earth within a decade. And it kind of, it laid the gauntlet down to an entire nation. And he said, we're all gonna do this. We're all gonna work on this together. There was the sense of the unknown. There was the sense of exploration. There was a sense that everyone could be involved in a little way with this, with putting these people on the moon. There were 12 people walked on the moon in six different missions and found out that the moon is covered in this very fine layer of dust. It's this powder, it's silica, it's alumina. These, these are not nice things for us to, to breathe in. This dust got in everything. It got in the spacesuits, it got into the radiators of the spacecraft, and they realized this is actually a really hard environment to live in and to work in. That really is why we haven't been back. We are celebrating the 50th anniversary of that first step on the moon. Now's the time when NASA have announced that, that we're going to go back. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, so I tailored my career towards following that dream. And I did that by looking at the CVs of other astronauts. Many of them had studied science subjects, so I started off by studying a bachelor degree in physics, and then from there went and got my PhD in physics. That was in England. So after a couple of years, I got my job with the European Space Agency, and that was where I got to do my physics and science on board a parabolic flight. And that was very, very cool. They go up in this kind of circular path. And as they do that, at the same moment, they cut the power and then everything goes into free fall. So the airplane just goes over this arc and every one, everything, the entire plane goes through this period of free fall or, and, or weightlessness. The reason it's called the Vomit Comet is that about 25% of the people on these flights usually get sick. So you have this 25 second period shot where you've got to do your, your science, you've got to do your experiment. And this is where we observe things like uh, metals or magnets or cells or crystals and just observe how they behave differently than how they would behave in the lab. Through that experience, I then was selected by the European Space Agency to go and become an astronaut instructor. We had a lot of expedition crews would come through the European Astronaut Center. Uh, lots of astronauts, Americans, Russians, Japanese, Canadians. I even trained Chris Hatfield. I simply can't remember a time when I didn't want to be an astronaut. I've always wanted to go into space. I'll just look up into the sky and the stars and the moon and the planets just fascinate me, they enthrall me. As human beings, we're very curious. We're always looking, we always want to know, oh, what's over there? Oh, what's that? And space is the ultimate, I can see it, but I can't get to it. So it's, it just has this fascination for us. I just feel so fortunate that I live in a time when we have the technology to physically go there. It's, it's just so exciting. I think about, you know, these, astronomers and when the first telescopes were invented and even when the pyramids were being built you know they're all connected to where the stars are and where they're positioned and you know this was how Kennedy was able to inspire his entire nation to go to the moon and we're doing it again and we'll continue to do it it's that power to inspire it's that it's that fascination that gets everybody one quarter of the world's population watched those people landing on the moon. That's incredible. <laughs>